Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sound transmission class ratings. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a, a graphic that uh, lists the materials that we use for barriers and the materials that we use for sound absorption technologies because those are confusing to a lot of people and a lot of people get them mixed up. So let's go through some of the uh, definitions and examples that I think you'll get a feel for, for what we're talking about. Our rooms technically should be two rooms. It should be a room within a room. The room in which we're in is the room where we do all our work, where we play our music, where we do our recording. The room that's around that is our shell. And this is a, a structure that's all about isolation. We want to keep all the energy that's in the room in the room, and we want to keep all the energy that's being produced outside the room from coming into the room. So its chief objective with our shell is isolation. Now I know a lot of us can't have a separate structure for isolation and a separate structure for sound absorption and sound diffusion technology and doing our, our musical, uh, uh, whatever we're doing musically in the room. So we try to get the room to do both functions. We try to get it to isolate and we also try to get it to absorb and diffuse. And I think here's where the confusion lies. So what is sound, uh, sound transmission class? It's a, a rating of the materials in the shell for isolation, not concerned with the absorption and diffusion that goes on inside. And I think here's where the confusion lies. So the shell, if we have our room, and then we have a room within a room, our shell here, has to have a flexibility and a rigidity ratio to the room inside of it. So there has to be a certain balance between the materials that we use in our shell and the materials that we use in our room. And that balance between those materials is critical to the sound quality that goes on inside our room. So a lot of barriers are made of concrete. So that's very rigid and very dense. A lot of the rooms, you know, are framed with wood, which is a positive thing for sound quality. So the, the, the flexibility rigidity ratio between the structure of the room that we're working in and our shell has to be taken into consideration. But our shell is where the sound transmission class rating comes into play. It's a rating of how much energy the shell can keep from entering the room. Has really nothing to do with the absorption and diffusion that goes on within the room. So I get a lot of questions about sound transmission class rating as it relates to absorption and diffusion in the room. And they're completely separate concepts. A sound transmission rating, just to give you an idea of uh, how, how uh, barrier technology works. A sound transmission rating on a structure of 50 is better than 40. Now that said, that 10 uh, incremental difference is very expensive because to isolate sound energy from coming into the room, you have to use a lot of mass. Mass is expensive. So you want to match the rating of the shell to the noise levels that you have out here in, in space and time. So if you're in a, busy, uh, in a busy environment where there's a lot of traffic and car noise, the STC rating of the shell will have to be much higher because you have more energy that you have to keep out of the room. So the thing about barrier technology versus treatment is that they really address separate issues and, and a lot of people get those confused. Barriers are also broken down into two, two categories, those above 125 cycles and those below 125 cycles. And we'll show you a graphic at the end uh, that'll help you with that. So if the noise outside your room is less than 125 cycles, you're gonna need a certain barrier technology to keep that energy out. If it's above 125 cycles, you're gonna need less mass, but you're still gonna need a technology that will keep those frequencies out. So quantifying our noise levels, deciding how much barrier technology we have to use, and then applying the right amount of sound absorption and diffusion treatment within the room will be helpful. 
So our graphic will, uh, will show you that. So in this graphic, you can see that we have airborne energy striking uh, the barrier. And then obviously we want to isolate that. We don't want it getting in our room. So then we have airborne energy striking a structure, which then turns into vibrational energy. And the goal of the barrier will be to stop those vibrations from becoming sound energy within our room. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.